In today's clip, we're going to look at different techniques that you can use in your watercolour work to take your work further. We're going to look at different ways in which you can use your work to show texture and look at different blending techniques. We're also going to look at different ways in which you can apply your watercolour pencils to improve the gradients and make them look smoother. So let's get on with the tutorial. So I'm going to start by talking about equipment. Any watercolour pencils will do, but I'm going to be using my Caran Dash set that I've had for a very long time. You can see it's very well used. I will also be using Archer's 300 GSM watercolour paper and I will be using two different brushes. One is a silver watercolour brush and the other one is a flat brush. The reason I'm using a flat brush is it's very good to get into all the little areas of the paper. So let's get on with the tutorial. So the first technique I'm going to show you is block colour and I'm shading in my area here with the purple pencil and I'm using the side of the pencil because I want to cover a large area quickly. I'm going to try and get into as many of the gaps as possible though when I apply the water it will activate the pencil and it will turn it into paint. I'm going to go over it several times so that I can get a really bright colour mix. So when you add the water to the pencil, because it's a water soluble binder, it automatically turns into paint. Now, if you use a flat brush, because of the nature of the brush, it gets into all the white areas of the paper. So that's why I recommend you use that with watercolor pencils. So now we're moving on to layering colors. It's really important when you think about using watercolor pencils that you think about planning your image and layering your colors before you apply the water to activate the color. So here you could consider this would be maybe a background for a landscape and I'm layering the dark tones, the mid tones and the light tones. And then when I add the water, it will activate the pencil and turn it into paint. And then as I move up with my flat brush, I'm gonna mix the colors together. I may add a second layer later, but if you want to add a second layer, you must wait for your paint to dry. So when you need to add a gradient with watercolour pencil, there are two ways to do this. The first way, which has more control, is to add the gradient with the watercolour pencil before you add the water. Then you apply the water from the lighter area, gradually moving up to the darker area, and then you have your gradient. The second way is to add a block of colour at one end of your paper. You then apply the water to activ activate the watercolour pencil and then go to the bottom of the paper where you've got your lightest area and then bring the paint down. It is as effective, but it doesn't have as much control with it. So it's up to you to decide which one you would like to use. We're now going to talk about blending two colors together. And with this, you can choose to either mix the paint in the middle, so leave a gap, or blend your colours together beforehand. I prefer to blend the colours beforehand because, again, you have more control. So I'm blending yellow and red here. I know it looks orange, but it's kind of an orangey red, a warm red. And then when I apply the water, it activates the, the watercolour pencil, makes it into paint, and it will make a nice, bright, vibrant yellow. So as you move across the colours with your brush, it blends the red into the yellow and makes an orange colour in the middle. So if there is an area that you want to apply your strokes in a looser way, you can either just add watercolour paint or if there's a particular colour that you want to use if you've been applying with your watercolour pencils what you can do is make up a block of colour on another sheet of paper or on the side of your paper and then apply water on top and that will make paint. Also if you have been sharpening your pencils and some of the pencils have come off or have broken off then don't waste those leads. You can also make them into paint in a paint palette, um, say for example you had a green and a black and you wanted to make a dark black, a, a dark green, you could put them together and make those colours together in your palette. So please don't chuck away watercolour pencil leads because they can be used and you can make paint out of them. 
So this particular technique is really good if you're trying to add details. You can add watercolour pencil on top of watercolour paint. But for this particular technique, I'm just showing it on top of a layer of water. And it can create an effect of rainfall if it's got a lot of water on it. It can look quite blurry, um, which is an interesting effect. But I'm just showing you how it works with regards to the pencil going onto the water. It just, it just runs and it, it works a bit more smoothly than if you were using a normal pencil. So it can be quite effective, especially if you have more water on the area. A really effective and creative technique is to use a wet brush on the tip of your pencil and then splash the paint onto an area to create a paint splash effect. And it also means that you're not using a lot of paint because sometimes you can do this with acrylic, which is fine. But then why not just do, do it with a pencil? It's a lot less mess. So you can use as many colours as you like to get your desired effect. So the last technique is to use the tip of your pencil and use that directly as paint. So this is really good if you want precision with your work. It's best to use a small brush and then use that directly as paint. So I've painted in this first layer here of green and then I'm adding finishing touches with the dark brown. And it's really good, as I said, for, for things like eyelashes, really fine details. If you're doing a portrait, you could do um, the lip color, that kind of thing. If you found today's clip useful, then make sure you check out more clips like this in the watercolour playlist. Don't forget to look in the description below for details of products used in today's clip. And if you have any ideas for content or questions, then leave a comment below. Finally, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of future content.